and uh, it's really uh, a, a great experience that uh, uh, Hosen uh, allowed us uh, to exchange experience between two different ways of practice. And I believe this is a really appreciated concept that uh, opened the window to exchange experience between uh, different urologists. Uh, I think our agenda today is uh, very straightforward and easy. We will have a live surgery by Professor Lee, and we have, uh, uh, after that, uh, some interactive talks from uh, another two speakers from the uh, Arab region. Uh, we'll introduce them soon once we finish the live surgery. Dr. Uh, Saeed Ben Hamri and uh, Dr. Uh, uh, Ali uh, Rifai. So uh, I think we, because I see now the patient is ready in the operating room, so I will just keep the, the mic uh, to uh, 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 Professor Tiani just to, to introduce the, the, the session. Okay, Professor thank Andy. you. Okay, thank you, yes, sir. <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. it, it, the time is uh, two o'clock uh, in, in China, it's uh, two o'clock. So, good afternoon, uh, dear uh, Dr. Yasser, Dr. Uh, Shikovei, and uh, Dr. Li Jin, and uh, Dr. Said, and uh, Dr. Eileen, and uh, okay. all the dear friends in front of the screen. I'm Dr. Tian, the director of Beijing Forensic Hospital uh, Urology Department. Uh, welcome. It is my uh, great pleasure as the host of this uh, webinar and to welcome you to uh, to be online to celebrate Pushin's lunch event in Beijing Forensic Hospital. We are very proud to see a medical brand from China had such a great achieve, achievement overseas and finally can be helpful in this homeland. It is great pleasure for me and Dr. Li Jin to arrange this gathering for Pusen and have this first show in Beijing. I want to take this opportunity to inform you that of your urological uh, Calculi team has uh, accomplished uh, 1,500 to 2,000 cases of uh, upper urinary calculi intraluminate surgery annually, which is the leading level in China. We have innovatively carried out intraoperative treatment for children's kidney stones and formed the largest uh, pediatric stone treatment center in our country. After several years of hard working, our advantage project gradually mature and stable. The academic status and the academic influence are rising rapidly, and now it has become a large center of a center for minim minimally invasive treatment of, of upper urinary calculi and a professional uh, technical training center. We uh, make full use of uh, our academic uh, advantages to carry out to continue uh, uh, education and uh, training. So far to promote the advanced experience of forensic hospital and expand its academic influence. We have
，那个那个那个，上上六楼，你跟田主任说一下，他那个卡住了，或者是打个电话，金老师，这这打电话，田主任不一定接。So, uh, hello, Professor Yasser. Yes, I'm here. Yeah, you, you can hear me, yeah. of course. Maybe maybe something wrong, but the, I I can see. Uh, also, Professor Xu is mute. Yes. Maybe, maybe Professor Xu. Uh, maybe the Professor Xu, you hear us? Maybe the signal is not quite good, but uh, at least uh, we are alive. <laughs> you and me. Okay. Maybe so. now. Maybe now Professor Tian is uh, restart the, the computer, or we can see. Okay. But, uh, uh, yeah. So I think to, to, to save time for our audience, we can uh, move to your uh, surgery, and then when once they are connected, we can uh, let them okay. in again. Okay. So, so uh, you are ready in the operating theater now, I think. Yes. Yes. Okay, so I, I share now uh, my screen. Can you see it? Yes, clear. Yes. Okay, so this is the, uh, our case today. If you like to introduce the data about it, uh, actually, uh, I think it's clear for everyone. It's 41 year old male with the left renal stone. Uh, he has a past history of PCNL in 2016 for left ureteric stone. And in 2017, he has flexible URS for left renal stone. Uh, there is no gross hematuria, but he has flank pain. And there is no family history of stone disease. And he has past medical history of hypertension and the urine routine test showing some RPCs, uh, white blood cells, and uh, his other laboratory test, nitrate is negative, uh, uric acid is 550, calcium 2.1, uh, creatinine is in the normal. Uh, and this is the CT scan of uh, the patient, which is stone size is 1.8 by 1.6 centimeter in the left renal pelvis and the density is not that high it is around 536 house and field unit so it gives us impression that it will not be that much hard the stone and uh, and i think uh, this is the brief summary of the case anything professor lee you like to add information about the patient for today uh, thank you very much, and uh, of course, first I want to thank Professor Tian and Professor Xu uh, for the broadcast. And uh, the patient is um, one stone uh, located inside the pelvis, and uh, I think this much suitable for FUS operation. The stone is no larger than two centimeters, and uh, the guideline size is over two. Maybe we should choose this out first. And uh, the density of the stone is not quite high. So today we will choose the IFUI technique for this stone. And uh, uh, so uh, everybody can hear me clear? Yes. Oh, thank you. Uh, first, first, we will check the whole ureter with radioscopy. Uh, yes, 
I said, I said before, in my center, we will per dilation 100%, but this patient without per dilation, because uh, two years ago, he has been performed RRS. So I think the urethral condition may better than normal. So uh, first, uh, let, let's uh, try, let's see uh, okay. the urethral condition with the radioscopy. Okay, let me to ask one thing here, uh, Professor Lee. Uh, mm -hmm. Usually, if a patient has a past history of prior surgery, we will have a concern about uh, some anatomical abnormalities. So, usually, we prefer to do uh, a pre stenting to dilate such patient to avoid any surprises. Do you use you a double J as a routine pre stenting or no? You mean? The patient has been performed or operation before. You yeah. will present. Yeah. But actually, I don't think so, <laughs> because okay, if if he has been performed any kind of endoscopic operation, um, success before, I think the ureter condition must be good. But if something happened last time, I think uh, maybe the uh patient will tell me something but the patient said last two operations very success so i think so you can see here yeah the so condition. you are you but are using now the rigid scope yeah radio scope okay. i will check i will check the whole lens to the upg so here i think we reach the kidney yeah clear now we will left one uh side wire yes uh doctor yes uh you 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 have asked me the uh last time if i use the safe guide wire but uh, normally in china i think uh we will not uh use introduce the safety guide wire uh, only one kind of wire, I think, enough for the whole procedure. Okay, so, so you enter the axis sheets over the guide wire and then you remove the, the wire? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, this is a sheet, this is a uh, uh, FUS sheet, and uh, I use 12 inside, 14 outside. This is uh, my favorite sheet. Okay. Uh, because the urethral condition is quite good, so we can you you can see here we can introduce the sheath easy and smooth and then i totally no 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 i don't no no no, no i withdraw the uh how to say inner part and the guide wire together Okay, so you now you are inside with the axis sheath and uh, you removed the guide wire? And yeah, yes, and the inner part together. Okay. Yeah. So, so you, are, uh, you are going now with the single use urethroscopy from Posen, yes? Uh, Posen, you mean Posen? Yeah. Or the sheath. So everything, no. is single, everything, everything is single use. Here. Okay. Uh, include the person and uh, the get wear, of course, and the sheath. Okay. Uh, so uh, this is person. I think can nobody. We can we see the deflection of the tip, how it works? What? Before Sorry? going inside. Can we see from outside? Do you have a camera from outside to focus mm -hmm. on the scope itself? Mm hmm. Professor D, can the operation begin? Yeah. Uh, so you mean you see from I, I only see the PPT. Uh-huh. Uh, uh hello? Yes, sir. Yes. Yeah, you, you should stop share the presentation. Okay, I'm sorry. Yeah, 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 yeah. It it blocked the screen. Okay. So uh Professor Xu, uh, uh Professor Tian. So it, the, the view is clear, I think. No, no, I'm still waiting. 
Yeah, uh, Dr. Yasso, Professor Xu said uh, maybe something wrong with his. Uh, I stopped hand. sharing the screen. Yeah. So uh, this is the uh, scope, and uh, now we already introduced the sheets. I will, I will connect the irrigation. Uh, I will use the automatic pump for this patient. Okay. Uh, yeah, uh, there are several kind of irrigation, include the, uh, how to say, we, 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 we call the human pump, that hand oh. device, and uh, the automatic pump. And uh, so, uh, some use uh, the bag and uh, something, but yeah. uh, in my center, we choose the um, automatic pump. So you prefer but, automatic pump in most of cases? Most, for most, for most cases. And uh, it actually, uh, if you want to uh, control the flood like this here, we can use yeah. this, yeah, to make the irrigation larger or smaller. And uh, so, uh, so, can you see the endoscopic view clear? Yes. Now, yeah, yeah. Yes. Now, the scope enters the pelvis, and uh, first, uh, I think we should. Uh, Use the sheath and the pump. Uh, yeah, to yeah. make the it has it clear. Yeah. yeah. So this is uh, maybe the hydro. Okay. Uh, uh, which laser you are using, Dr. Lee? Yeah, uh, I will stop. I use the tremondine. Okay. Yeah. And which parameters you prefer to use? Uh, you mean the laser setting? Yes. Uh, this time I used the uh, one juice energy with 20 hertz. But if with luminance, I will use 0 0.8 juice with 40 hertz. So I will start. OK. So uh, uh, I, I, I feel, I feel, Gemini is um, mild power. And uh, the luminance is a uh, strong power. Uh, luminance may break the stone quickly, but may produce some uh, large fragment. But uh, Tremendai uh, will smash and uh, dusting the stone inside of break yeah. the stone. So different uh. laser. Uh, I think uh, it's in, it's related to the settings mm, rather than the type or the brand of the laser because all of us know that uh, mm -hmm. the settings for dusting, if you go with a low power, high frequency, and long balls, this will help you to have more dusting and you can adjust that based on the, the settings. No, no, and no, no. I, I feel... I, I can feel some ah. difference between different brand laser. Yeah. <laughs> this is my feeling. If you fix the same settings, you feel a difference? No, yeah, 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 yes, yes, yes. Professor Lee, I'm so yes, sorry, yes. I can see the operation, oh. but I have a question. Uh, can you mm -hmm. uh, tell me uh, what you think about uh, X-ray assistant? Necessary in this kind of operation. Uh, thank you, Professor Xu. Yes, uh, I think uh, X-ray assessment is very important for lithotripsis, especially for PCL. But uh, if we perform uh, flexible endoscopy, I don't think I don't think X-ray is necessary. Uh, because nowadays, uh, with the help of the digital technique, we can see inside the pelvis very clear. Of course, we can uh, distinguish each calcis easy. 
but uh, maybe years before, the scope is not quite good and the view is not quite good. So at that time, maybe we should use the fluoroscopy for help to find the right calyces and uh, to find the stone. But nowadays, I think uh, we, can, we can find any calyces, any structures easy. So after this capsule, I will show the audience the inside structure of this patient. Uh, so, uh, Doctor, yes, sir. Uh, yes. Professor Tian and uh, uh, yeah, Professor Xu. Now I finish. Yeah, it's a great job. <laughs> I, I think no, I think I finish. But of course, of course, I I will I will check the whole collection system for the audience and of course for the patient. Uh, here we use the uh, popcorn effect for that thing. Uh, compare, we can see, we can see a uh, stop the irrigation. We can see compare with the fiber. But of course, normally I, I don't like the end bean. I, I don't like end bean. So, uh, <laughs> without MB, but compare with the laser fiber, we can see the fragment already tiny because the laser fiber is less than, uh, how to say, 200 micro. Yeah. It is a 200 micro fiber. So if five fold of the, if the diameter of the fragment, five fold of the laser fiber, it means one millimeter small enough for spontaneous uh, get out of the, yeah, yeah. The, the, the fragment. So you need so the fluoroscopy or something now to check uh, if any big fragments is still remaining or moved to the lower pool or something like that? I, oh, sorry, you, you mean? Uh, using fluoroscopy or you will go to explore other calices to, to figure out if any large fragment migrated uh, somewhere else. I, yeah, I will track the whole collection system. Just use the scope itself. Because uh, we don't prepare the fluoroscopy. Okay. So let's start. Uh, so if you, you can see the irrigation is quite okay. The irrigation yeah. is quite okay. Yeah. Enough to need. So I will provide my scope very clear uh, because this is a digital scope. And so here, out of the UBJ and then enter the uh, here. So if the scope enter the kidney, First, we will see the upper calyces normally. And uh, so all these uh, upper, upper calyces. And then, yes, I think all these. And then still here, still here, I think, I think maybe upper. But these two, I'm not sure. If this is upper or middle, I will, I will, I will continue to deflect the scope. So I, I'm sure here, all these small calyces belong to upper, but these two, I'm not sure. Like middle, but uh, maybe upper. So I will deflect, continue. And then, so here, there's a maximum deflection. And also we see a mixed uh, large calyces. A fusion. So this yeah. one, two, and the three together must be lower calyces. So now I'm sure these two is are middle. middle. Yeah. Uh, they are posterior and anterior middle separately. Yeah. And uh, so this, all these include maybe one, two three, four belong to upper, and then two middle 
one is anterior, one is posterior, and then one and two and three for lower part. So here now I scan for the whole collection system and uh, I'm sure there are no large fragment left. So we can yeah. see the fragment uh, tiny pieces. And then I pull out the scope, recheck the UPG and uh, peel the scope inside the sheet. Are you so planning I'm to send to this patient? Yes, yes. Uh, send 100% after operation. Yeah. So now we can finish the operation and uh, with the help of single-use digital scope, we can make the IFUS operation easy and uh, quickly, of course, with a uh, very good result. Yeah. So now I will use, just use the sheet for guide wire and then so that where we will insert in the way of the stent. Yeah, uh, Professor Lee, uh, actually it was very uh, amazing and um, interesting experience that uh, you show that the case is very simple, uh, very convenient uh, regarding mm -hmm. to the technique, regarding to the scope, regarding to the accessories you are using. But let me to uh, uh, discuss with you some points because yeah. we know you are doing that uh, after thousands of cases. But let's to share uh, mm -hmm. our young urologists the, the basic steps that they have to follow, especially if they are in the beginning of their career. Let mm -hmm. me to uh, uh, put some points with you. Uh, Pre-dilatation. What's your advice to young urologists uh, if they have to do a pre-dilatation or no mm -hmm. need? Yes, of course. I, I think uh, flexible uroscopy may be easy uh, for the young surgeons. And, uh, but first, um, for each patient, you should start study the films, include the CT scan, of course, uh, I think uh, uh, IVU with contrast may be better. Uh, so do you recommend it to do contrast for all patients before URS? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, if for the young doctor. Uh, first, you, 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 you can see, you can find how many small calluses. Yeah. Uh, inside the kidney. Uh, different kidney, different structure. Um, and also the small calluses, number of small calluses is not the same. So if this contrast, you can see everything clear. Yeah, and but the, let me share this, with you what we have in our region. Usually if we are planning for uh, flexible retroscopy, uh, a plain CT scan without contrast is the standard, and only we go for contrast if we feel there is a special anatomical abnormality, so we go for uh, oh, it, uh, contrast. Yes, I, I, I think that in my opinion, I Uh, IFUS operation, I recommend fluoroscopy for health. Uh, yeah. Even 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 with a good scope and uh, even the maybe the structure is uh, not quite complex and the stone is uh, one single stone, but uh, for some case maybe the stone will um, 
broke into pieces and will fall everywhere. So uh, if you first a few operations, I suggest you use uh, uh, fluoroscopy for help. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, second and point that I want also from your experience after thousands of cases again, mm -hmm. uh, you may not uh, use a safety guide wire, but what's your message to the beginners? Uh, do you mm -hmm. recommend it to start having a safety guide wire till uh, urologists get more experience and then they can decide if they need or not? Yes, yes. If you start maybe guide wire, safe guide wire, it will be uh, very important and uh, it can avoid some serious complex uh, complications. And uh, yeah. yeah, and also I think uh, to learn the anatomy structure is very important. You should know the patient first and you sh because each patient, the structure of the kidney in each patient is different and you should know you patient first and then um, try, when you introduce the scope, try to find every calyces first, inside the brick zone first. Yeah. Uh, normally, uh, uh, yes, actually happened with me. Um, when we start work, uh, when we use the scope, when we enter the scope and when we see the zone, we will feel very happy and then lithotripsy immediately. Yeah. But I suggest first light, stone, light the stone be here and uh, then use the scope to see the whole structure and uh, know where the stone locate uh, and uh, know the whole uh, anatomy structure. So then you uh, smash the stone. If large pieces, uh, how to say, if you produce large fragment, you can find it easily. But if you are not familiar with this patient, maybe you will like some large fragment. So for me, uh, but, but today I, I smash the stone first because I, yeah. I, I learned the structure well. But if for starter, I suggest you go through the whole kidney first and then smash the stone. And okay. then let me to have a comment about the axis sheet. Uh, mm -hmm. The first question: uh, What will you do if axis sheet is not easy to be introduced? And yeah. is fourteen French is the common size that you are using? Because in our region we usually prefer ten, twelve access sheets, mm -hmm. we feel mm -hmm. it is more easy, especially if the patient is not pre-stented. So 10, 12 is, uh, we believe yeah. that it's less traumatic, easy to be inserted. What do you think? Yeah, yeah. 10, 12 may be safe uh, for introduced, but I don't think the drainage is quite good, especially for yeah. the single-use scope, because normally the single-use scope is non-French outside. Uh, um, for the access sheets, uh, I, I, I would rather choose a 12, 14 inside of 10, 12. Uh, but in different country, maybe different habit. Uh, yeah. Because, uh, yes, we percent first. Okay. And then so what you will do if there is difficulty to insert the access sheet? You felt resistance, difficult, so you will go directly with the flexible scope without access sheet or you just extend to the patient? Uh, I mean, if we can't insert the sheath. Yeah. Yeah, if we can't insert sheath, actually, I think just uh, insert, just the individual uh, stent and then like the patient waiting two weeks, maybe a uh, better choice. Okay, let Inside me to rephrase it. I will ask the question in a different way. Nowadays, many uh, debate about using access sheets or go without access sheet. Mm -hmm. What's your impression about having the full procedure without access sheet? Hmm. Actually, I, I, I never tried a pure scope. 
before. <laughs> Actually, I, I never tried a pure scope before. So, uh, I, I so axis sheets is, is a common, you have to put axis sheets. You are not going without, yeah? Yes, uh, in my view, uh, access sheets is um, must be and uh, uh, must use 100%. If without access sheets, then I, I don't think it's safe. I don't think it's safe for the little trip seat. Yeah. But this is only uh, my, my opinion. I, I agree with you, but you know that there are many publication, many studies now uh, showing the, some uh, feasibility to have it without access sheets, without no significant morbidity, more than uh, using the access sheet. So, uh, uh, but I believe, I agree with you that uh, using the access sheet is more safe and more convenient for better irrigation, better visibility, easy access in and out several times. So a lot of advantages for the access sheet that make you work at ease and uh, in a safe environment. Yeah. Hey, hello, Dr. Sai. Oh, sorry, uh, Dr. Yasser. Uh, yeah. May I shift it to my office? Okay. It, 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 so, it may take five minutes. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, you. We want to thank you. Yeah. Uh, they, are, they, will, they will change the patient. So let me go back to my office. Okay. Will, yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. So, Dr. Shu, you are with us yet? Mm -hmm. Can you hear us? Okay, so uh, actually, uh, it, I just ha I have a small comment about the surgery. It uh, honestly, it gives the impression to anyone. It's a very easy procedure, straightforward, uh, just a few minutes. Uh, it's really uh, like that in many cases, but we have to keep in mind that sometimes uh, cases is not that straightforward. Sometimes you can have a difficulty in the ureter, so you have to keep in mind that uh, you need to, to, to put safety wire, to breathe into the patient, to have a, an easy access uh, to the kidney. Uh, second thing that you have to be familiar with all equipments, all accessories to have everything stand by, not to utilize everything, but if you need uh, other accessories, if you have a uh, hard stone, not fragile like this, and you fragment and you have some uh, significant residuals, so you need to pick it up with a dormia basket. So, this is another issue that you have to be ready for it. Uh, and the, you have to be familiar with the laser settings that it can help you to, to, to have a different uh, modes of dusting, popcorn, fragmenting. So all kinds of uh, stone pulverization could be uh, available in your hand. Uh, and finally, you have to keep in mind the post-operative uh, the exit to be sure that your ureter is fine and there is no trauma. Uh, the plan is to stent or not to stent. Uh, so I think it's, uh, it's a nice experience and I think uh, using the single-use ureteroscopy, uh, it was uh, very clear that it has a good quality of image that um, like a digital imaging, so you can see all details when Dr. Lee went into through the whole calysis, he can manipulate the scope uh, to navigate the kidney, upper and middle and lower calysis uh, with a good vision. And uh, with laser also, the, the vision is good. Uh, uh, so I think the maneuverability, the image quality, and the, the, uh, the irrigation by the working channel uh, it was very convenient uh, and uh, the, the help it Dr. Lee to have uh, a successful procedure in short time. Uh, I believe that uh, let me to share with you uh, some questions. Let's to uh, back again to the concept of sharing experience before starting with our uh, guest speakers. We have, I think, 10 minutes. 
So we have a few polls questions. And actually the questions which we will design, I hope that Elvi or someone from Posing can share these polls now. Uh, uh, what I ask everyone to, to answer based on his own clinical practice, not uh, as what guidelines say, what uh, he read in books, but we need to understand what you are doing in China and what we are doing here in the Middle East. So initially, let's to understand from our audience now uh, how many cases of flexible retroscopy you are doing. Yes, Dr. Lee, you are here? I'm back. Okay, so we just, uh, we said uh, uh, some uh, positive things about your operation while you are not hearing us. And we appreciate your technique, your uh, fast procedure, and thank you for demonstration. Yeah. Uh, and then now we will go for some questions. And as I explained just a few minutes back that we need to exchange experience. I want to understand what you are mm -hmm. doing here in uh, uh, what you are doing in China and what's different than what we are doing here in the Middle East. So please, yeah, yeah, anyone yeah. will answer for these polls or vote. He should share his own experience, not what he is reading in the guidelines or what books say. Mm -hmm. So to understand the volume of cases that everyone has in his center, let me to ask how many cases of flexible retroscopy uh, you are doing uh, per month. So everyone can vote, please. Uh, I think, yes, but you, you will uh, make a bias in the, in the, in the pool. <laughs> but let's to see how it goes. Yeah, yeah, actually, yeah, uh, in my center, we finished uh, around 800 flex, uh, flexible for us uh, last year. Uh, last year bare, uh, eight, 800, per, 800. Yeah. 800, 800 per year, yeah? Per year. Okay. Uh, I see here now uh, Dr. Saeed Ben Hamri. I'd like to welcome him. So I hope that he can share us uh, the vote. He's one of the high volume centers of doing uh, urethroscopy. Uh, welcome, Dr. Saeed. Uh, can we have the results of poll, LB? So I couldn't see the results of poll. Okay, Anyone yes, from Bozin? Yeah? Yes. Uh, the vote result is 43%. It's 10 to 20 per month and 30% each, less than 10, 20 to 30. So I cannot see the, the results of the pool, yeah? I will send it to you by WhatsApp, okay? <laughs> okay, that's okay. fine. Uh, so it seems that um, as I received the, the, the results from uh, the admin of the webinar that uh, we have a majority of our patients doing uh, 20 to 30 cases uh, per month. So this gives the impression that uh, we have a moderate uh, volume of cases, which is, I believe it's good number that uh, to get uh, experience in flexible retroscopy 20 to 30, but still we have 30% they are doing maybe between 10 uh, to uh, 20. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, now we have the results. It's uh, uh, as we see, 43% doing 10 to 20, and around 29% doing 20 to 30. And 29%, so we can say one third is doing less than 10. Uh, and, and no one is doing more than 30 per month. So between low and medium uh, volume of case. Can we have the second pool, please? And again, we need to, to answer based on our uh, clinical practice. So uh, the point, what size of the stone you are dealing with? You have put a limit for the stone for flexible retroscopy, less than one centimeter, less than 1.5, less than two, more than two. And please again, what you are doing in your center actually. Dr. Lee, he can go to two centimeter or more. Dr. Saeed, he can do that. But I need from all delegates to say the reality, the size that they are Keep it for flexible utroscopy. Can we vote? And just 10 seconds to, to, to finish the vote, please. But, Dr. Uh, yes, I think yeah. the guidelines 
side. Uh, if over two, the first choice is pizza. So we obey the rules. Normally we will choose the uh, song side less than two, but more than one or more than 1.5, around. Yeah, mm -hmm. I agree with you that uh, all of us would prefer, yes, as same as the vote, it came around 50% uh, limited to less than two and 30% 1.5 and 10% less than one centimeter. But we have 10% they are going for more than two centimeters too. And actually, I think uh, if you go back again, compare what we have now to the guidelines, yes, guidelines saying up to two centimeters and give a window that you can go for a larger stone of PCNL is not available. And I believe there are some studies, and I think Saeed, he is sharing in one of these studies that they compared going for a larger stone and uh, with the new development in the scope, in the laser, and uh, we believe that uh, we can go for a larger stone, and we expect that maybe guidelines show some change in the future. This is our expectation. But I can say yes, till now we can uh, be around 1.5 centimeter uh, and not exceeding the two centimeter. Dr. Said, you have a comment on this point? Um, thank you, Professor Farahat, uh, having me. Thank you, Professor Lee. It's a, it's a pleasure for me. As I noticed from, um, from, the, from the first poll that it's, um, you have a 30 per, two third of the people they do doing less than 20 percent. If you go to the higher center where the fellowship is applied, you have between 200 to 300 cases of utroscopy, which is the, which is the, um, the average of, uh, uh, of the centers in, for the fellowships. Uh, um, but what's striking me, those people who are doing less than 10 per month, so those, they will never exp build the experience till they do the, such an operation as fast, as simple as Professor Lee. Um, the, from the other hand, if you go for the ta size of the stone, I think most of the doctors, most of you urologists will say, I cannot do the PCNL. So the, my way is the flexible troscope, regardless of this patient is fit, is fit for the PCNL. And this is the wrong message that we should uh, um, uh, convey to uh, our uh, colleague as urologist. If you have a stone three centimeter, the guidelines say go for PCNL. If you don't have it, why do you do flexible troscope? So this is the dilemma when you approach those cases larger than two centimeters. So I'm always saying as the guideline European, 1.5 is a good option for the stone size until you build an experience. I'm not saying that go those people doing less than 10 cases pyrotoscopy per month, go and hit three centimeters because you are not having PCNL, you don't have an intervention or radiologist. You have to build your experience and know what are the, what is the kind of that stone. Is it uric acid, is it so fragile? I do some cases 1.5 in 20 minutes, but sometimes it's a very hard stone, sometimes it's in the lower pole, sometimes in difficult anatomical structure. So, so this is a big, big debate, which one is which? I think, I think we need time and we need more technology to facilitate and, uh, 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 the, this intervention. It is a progressive in technology coming for the last 10 years. Yeah, let me to just have a quick uh, opinion from uh, Dr. Ali is joining us. Welcome Dr. Ali also. Uh, regarding to the stone size, uh, we are working on one dimension or two dimension or stone volume and stone burden. This is another dilemma. Can you quickly Dr. Saeed comment about this? Is the question to me or to Dr. Saeed? Uh, all of, everyone will answer. Dr. Ali, you can answer first. What do you think? One or two or volume of the stone? I think it, it depends on the uh, equipment you have. If you have the dusting laser, so you can uh, go also for 1.5, no problem. Because uh, if, if, if you, the, the laser is uh, with a good function and with good dusting, so uh, why not? So I go Professor for it. Lee. Professor Lee. Uh, my point is, you decide to go for flexible retroscopy if you have one dimension, 1.8, or you have to check the second dimension, or you are looking for the stone burden or a volume of the stone, because 1.8 multiply 
0.8 different than 1.8 multiply 1.8. Mm -hmm. How can you choose your case? Uh, me. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yes, actually, uh, I when I made the presentation, I will see uh, one centimeter cucumber is not the same as a one centimeter watermelon. The, yeah, the size is totally different. So now actually I will consider two factors. One is the size, of course this burden. And the other thing is the density. So uh, now uh, we have, um, or uh, how to see, a way to measure the stone. We call it stone mass. It means the stone burden multiple with yes. the density together. Uh, now we, we will publish some papers for this idea. And uh, if the size is a little bit larger, but the density is not quite high. So yeah. the result is still low. So we can yeah. use this for such patient uh, okay. with uh, FLS technique. But uh, if we face some small stone, but very hard, actually I will choose PCNL instead. So uh, in my center, we will consider the three dimension also with the density together. Okay. Uh, Saeed, can you quickly give me your feedback about this point because you know many publications even the guidelines saying it's stone less than two centimeters they are not considering the stone volume what do you think about that maybe some change in the future in the near future the stone volume is very important and the stone composition is very important and the site of the stone is very important are the, these are will uh, you have to take it in consideration you cannot say a straightforward renal pelvis stone 2.5 centimeter a slightly hypercalcuric, slightly slow, uh, low hyperoxaluric is a very fast procedure, rather than two centimeter in the lower pole. In China, I believe in China, the stone is not hard as in the Middle East. Believe me, I have treated Egyptian patient, I have treated Yemeni patient, I have treated, they are so hard of stone because we have a rich of oxalate and dehydration. And the type of stone in France, when I was in France, it's almost 50% uric acid. If you go to United States, you will never, see two centimeter. My friend Brian Matlaga, he told me in John Hopkins for the last 15 years he did not see stone larger than two centimeter. So yeah. the thing here that we can, you have to talk about the geographic status. You can in, the, in India, for example, they cannot forget the PCNL because they have a stone. So it's a, it's a tricky question, Professor Farahat. I think okay. as a, uh, Dr. Ali said, uh, what you have, you have to play with it and you have to uh, match the patient, personalize your experience with him. And uh, for the end, the, 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 benefit, the benefit cost benefit, benefit for the patient is not for you. Yeah, yeah. It's clear, very clear. All our experts today uh, agree that we have to look carefully about the stone size, the stone density, and the stone location to have the, the proper decision how to manage your patient. Can we go to the next poll, please, uh, LV? Uh, we'll try to be fast to, to, to keep uh, some time to listen to our guest speakers. Uh, next poll, please. Uh, LV, are you here? Okay. something wrong okay so uh, maybe some technical issue but let me to ask uh, chair with our experts uh, one point yes dr ali uh, sometimes the neck of the calyces it's not uh, allowing you to go for ptl they have a very narrow very narrow uh, uh, which which while using the flexible uh, ureteroscope you can go through it you can uh, uh, does some some of the stone and you can take it out from from the calyces, and if you go for PSN, sometimes it's also anatomically 
little bit uh, difficult. So uh, you can match with the uh, flexible ureter colonoscopy such more than with the PCNL. Even yeah. if, you, if you use the mini PCNL, it's, uh, it will be also a, a different uh, case. Okay. So uh, actually, there is one important question that we need to understand the difference between what we have in, in our region and uh, I'm sorry, I'm sharing the screen. Uh, if I ask Professor Lee, in your uh, experience, what is the main limitation of using a flexible urethroscopy, especially uh, for small centers or uh, uh, urologists in their beginning of their career? Is it the cost of the scope? Is it the fragility of the scope? Is it the learning curve? Uh, is it, uh, uh, can you tell me what the limitation that you make using urethroscopy is not frequent in some centers? I think in some small center, um, the limitation for the beginning of the flexible urethroscopy may be uh, system knowledge of the IPRS technique. Uh, actually, um, cost and um, other something may not be uh, very important, uh, at least in China, you know. But uh, um, most of the surgeons think um, the flexible endoscopy may be easier for control, maybe less complex, um, uh, maybe less uh, complication. So, they buy the scope and then without uh, carefully preparation and without carefully choose of the patient, they will start the work. And then a serious complication happen, include infection and uh, uh, injury of the ureter. And then they must stop work. And uh, maybe they can never perform such operations later. So okay. I think- Dr. Ali. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Dr. Lee. So I, 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 think, I think training may be very important for small okay. centers. Yeah. yeah. You must Dr. Train. Ali, what do you think? What's the main limitation? You are working in Western Europe and I think uh, maybe cost is not an issue? No. In, in Switzerland, the cost is not an issue, but I think the learn curve is uh, a little bit longer than the rigid one. And uh, they have to learn to the 3D uh, how to work in, in a difficult anatomical uh, renal uh, uh, cases. So uh, to, to, this is a multitasking uh, 3D uh, working and the learn curve is a little bit longer. Uh, it takes more time than, than the, the rigid one. Uh, I think the poll came now. So, uh, Dr. Saeed, what do you think? Uh, cost or learning curve is the main limiting factor to have more urologists using flexible URS? Training. I agree with Professor Lee. Training is very important. Cost is not an issue. If you have yeah. the motivation, even I have been in Africa, I have seen them using flexible telescope disposable. If you have the motivation, you cross the line of have, not to fear about it. You have the good volume and good training, good mentor, you will go. Yeah. So I think the, uh, 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 all these items are important, either the cost, the fragility, sure. and the sterilization process. And those are the main factors behind the limiting use of reusable scope. Because I remember a few years back, uh, I cannot train my all my residents with flexible retroscope, which is very expensive and a fragile tool. So there is limited one only resident, he can get the chance and the other will not get. So the learning curve of the young urologist is, is, was not growing uh, very fast. So I believe this is an important point nowadays in the last few years, once we have the single use, all of us are eager and, uh, and feel uh, easy to, to learn our young urologists. So I think all of them are important and the learning curve is, uh, is very, very critical.
Uh, and I think, yes, the results of the poll came. I think you can see that the learning curve is the majority looking about the learning curve and linking the learning curve with the high cost, yes, because this is due to this one. So sure. both are connected together. So the, sure. the next question, which is, uh, what is the common dilatation method before a retrograde intrarenal surgery? As we, Dr. Lee today, he didn't put a stent. He, went directly with the rigid scope, which we name it like optical dilatation, using the semi-rigid. Um, but I want to understand others, are anyone still using Teflon dilators, balloon dilators, or some can go directly without dilatation, directly sure. with the uh, yeah. axis sheet. So all audience can vote, please. Yeah. So, uh, we listened to Dr. Lee that he always preferred to present his patient, almost all of them. Saeed, yeah. what are you doing? I, I believe pre-stenting is decreasing the complication and increasing your success rate, but it's not necessary. If it goes, because you, you might find this patient who had utroscopy 10 years ago, you might find a patient who is a stone former. You might have a patient who has a old age with the bladder neck uh, obstruction, so he has some sort of ureter. So I think it is true. The double stent, pre stent is good, but it's not the message. You understand the situation. But for the beginners, I prefer to tell my residents, stent your patient at the end, uh, beginning of your career. Then you will deal with the force you will know how to deal with the ureter. Okay, Dr. Ali, what's your comment? My comment is it depends if he's coming with the colleague in your, uh, in your uh, emergency or if it's an elective uh, operation. Both of them, I st uh, st uh, make a double G stand before to make a dilatation and to, to make less uh, complications because I don't like these dilatators uh, during uh, the... and there is up to go inside. The majority, 80% prefer to put double stent and 20% can do optical dilatation. And I think it's coming very strongly nowadays that uh, to save one stage uh, to stent the patient two weeks before and to save the admission and the double J cost, going for optical dilatation as Professor Lee did today, once he went with the rigid scope and he reached to the upper ureter, the ureter is fine, he can follow that with the axis sheath and he can finish his operation in one stage instead of a staged operation. So I think there may be some change uh, uh, for the dilatation using the semi-rigid before the axis sheath. Uh, we can go for the next question, try to move free, uh, quickly. How frequent are you using the safety guide wire? Professor Lee, today he didn't use the guide wire. No. Uh, but uh, Saeed, use, use it in all cases or never you use it or only with different I, cases? I use it in all cases except those certain ureters does not allow me because uh, you know the guide is about 1.9 millimeters. So if I need that space in certain time, but uh, like uh, frankly speaking, I'm using the guide almost in 99% of my cases. Dr. Ali. I use it only in uh, different uh, uh, cases because uh, when when it is uh, open uh, and and wide enough, so I don't use it if it's a small stone and so on. I don't. Okay, Professor Lee, again, is it a routine practice or not? You mean is it routine to put a safety guide wire? Yes. Yeah. Um, actually, I never use. <laughs> I never use. <laughs> okay. <it> <laughs> okay. So let us to say, as Saeed said, let's to make a balance for, for who is beginner or young urologist, we can recommend for them to keep the safety wire for their safety and for their patient safety. And maybe when they reach your experience, Professor Lee or Dr. Saeed or Dr. Ali, they can decide if they will use it or not. Uh, we'll move to the next poll. Uh, again, the axis sheet. We asked this question, who while you are operating and you said that you are using it in almost all cases. Uh, Saeed, are you going sometimes directly without access sheet? Yeah, but rarely, rarely. Uh, if, if 
it's the stone in the mid-ureter or below, I don't use an Excel sheet, but if it's in the kidney, I'm working a lot and taking my time for the sake of irrigation, for the sake of the pressure. All the in, in, all um, publication in the literature say that Excel sheets, the main advantage is to decrease the interrenal pressure and to help you to pass it more and to more build more visibility. So we cannot ignore this uh, tool during the flexible. I know uh, in China, Professor Lee, he does uh, without an extra sheet. Last time he saw us when he visited in Riyadh, the extra sheet, the advantages, how fast we did the two centimeter. But this, the, again, the question here that the dilemma about the injury and the ischemic changes, nothing proved. Even Olivier Traxer, he had only one to two percent of the stenosis, and it was in the early of his experience in the beginning of five years. Yeah. So, uh, and the extra sheet with the with a pre stented ureter or extra sheet with a virgin ureter. So, this is a, a big debate, big question. Yeah, yeah. But I, I just want to I, correct one thing. Professor Lee uh, usually uses the access sheets. He, he yes. is, I, I use it. I never use it always. Always. I always. Yeah. Uh, Dr. Ali. I use it always. Okay. So, let's to have the clear message to our young urologist, our expert today, recommend we can say in almost all cases, better to have the access sheet. True. Uh, how frequent post URS you are put stenting? Uh, so we have the results of the previous poll, which is divided. Lee? Yeah, sorry. Almost uh, all cases you are put a stent. Yes, first stent, 100% in my center. Okay. Mm -hmm. Saeed? Yeah, I put stent always. Dr. Ali? Only in a few cases, if you don't have uh, a big stone and uh, you do it uh, for, for one time, I don't uh, insert a, a stent. For the all other cases, I insert always a stent. Okay, so let me to ask. Uh, can I, can I use the laser? Yeah, uh, usually you know many publication comes that uh, and even the guidelines that DG stent post uncomplicated urotroscopy no need to put a stent. I think all of you have this publication several times, but I I have a doubt. What's the definition of uncomplicated urotroscopy? To decide not to put a stent. If it is quick. And uh, if you have a small stone and you can uh, take it out in, in uh, less than uh, half an hour, so I mean, uh, I don't insert this. If it's a small one, I don't use a laser. I take a, the curve and take it out, so I don't uh, insert one. If, if, yeah. uh, if it's bigger and I use uh, the laser and I manipulate uh, several times, I put always a double Yeah. Saeed, do you have a definition of uncomplicated urotroscopy? No. I have done 1.5 centimeters of the ureter, easier than those five, six millimeter because of the nature of obstruction. I think there is not difficult because you might use a laser, basket. I'd rather to place a stent for six hours, we call it a catheter one night, rather than coming and a patient. I have done a patient last week, ureteroscopy, it was uh, very simple, five millimeter in the upper ureter, he was stented. Then I saw his ureter was so tight, so I decided to put a stent with a thread. I removed it four days in my clinic. He came to the emergency of because of ureter was so tight and uh, lacking of peristalsis. So he began to have this paralysis. So I think I prefer to sleep overnight. I don't like my patient to come <laughs> and he said, because the patient, the, the operation is easy, but the patient, the main problem of utroscopy is the double G stent or not the stenting because we're playing around here. Make you, yeah. uh, I don't know, uh, be safe and that's it. That's great. Uh, in it's, case of post, uh, I, have, I have one question to to colleagues. I, uh, if it you you make it outpatient or inpatient? No, I make it an out. out you they, mean, they what, stay in, in Switzerland. They stay in the hospital. That's why if you don't insert. Oh. no, no, we do it as an outpatient. Uh, Ninety-nine percent of our cases is a day surgery. No, in, in Switzerland they stay for one or two nights. That's right. True, because you need money. You need money. That's why you do hospitalization. It was like in France. This is this is the case here. I mean, uh, he, he was. I know in Germany the same. In Germany is the same. Yeah. 
If they stay okay. for one night or two nights, that's fine. Uh, we'll move quickly to the next one. In, 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 in using a reusable scope, do you consider the cross infection? Uh, if you have a post URS urinary tract infection, can be one of the reasons? Professor Lee? I, I don't think so. I don't think okay. so. I, I don't think the infection is caused by the reusable scope. Okay. Dr. Sai? True, I agree. Dr. Ali. Me too. Uh, I can say, yeah, and we don't have enough information to, to confirm if there is a link between both urethroscopy and tract infection. We know there are multiple reasons of uh, UTI after urethroscopy, but I think there is no enough data uh, published about the uh, cross infection. Although in comparison between uh, some studies between the reusable and single use, few studies show less UTI and some studies didn't show uh, a significant difference. But I think still this is an area that needs further uh, study and further uh, well-designed uh, uh, assessment. Uh, we'll move to the next uh, point, pre-sterilization process in, in your center. Everyone can share his experience about his hospital, his center, if he, if he is using the reusable scope. It's one hour, one and a half hour, two hours. There is no, no information about the processing time. Professor Lee. Before yeah. having the single use, how long the scope can take to be re-sterilized? Uh, 60 minutes. Because uh, okay. we have the plasma equipment just inside the OR, so we can quickly and easily sterilize the scope. Okay, Dr. Said, in your uh, I think plasma, plasma steroid is two hours, and the side dicks is between 50, is 45 minutes, 60 minutes, as Professor Lee may, may do the side dicks. The, the, the problem is not the sterilization itself, it's the, if you break it, you might be absent for six months, three months to be repaired. Yeah. So yeah. if you have only one you're usable, you will be stuck for three months without your scope. Yeah, but in your hospital, you are using plasma? I, I use both, plasma and side dicks. Okay, and Dr. Ali, how long it take in your hospital? Uh, it take hours because we don't have a plasma inside uh, our hospital, so we have to, to seek for uh, another location for uh, the partner hospital, and uh, it takes a lot of time. Yeah, if we can get the results of other audience to see what other hospitals doing, it will be good. Otherwise, we'll move to the last question. Uh, what is the average number of cases before the first repair of reusable scope in your hospital, Dr. Lee? Uh, 20, I think. 20. Mm -hmm. Around 20. Aid. Because, yeah. Um, uh, 10 to 15. Because we give a chance to our residents. Yeah, residents are, yeah, I will, <laughs> I will show you in my lecture what's going on. Okay, so Dr. Ali. Yeah, also 10 to 15 because sometimes uh, the laser is it, damaging the, uh, okay. the different cases. Yeah. So if we can get the audience share and we'll keep the discussion for this, I think our speaker will uh, highlight uh, about this point. But I think many of uh, the audience either between 10 to 15 in 40 percent and 15 to 20 in 50 percent, which it means a very small number that can reflect on the cost and reflect on the learning curve. As we asked it in the beginning, what the main limitation of using the flexible retroscopy? And thank you for the concept of single use that will help us to have something affordable to uh, our patients and affordable to our hospitals and affordable to our uh, uh, residents in a high quality and good start. I will stop here and thank you for participation and I uh, will invite our speakers to, 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 uh, to be ready with their sharing the screen. Uh, uh, we'll start with uh, Dr. Uh, Saeed. Uh, he can share, can you share your screen? Yes, of course.
course. Uh, uh, actually, uh, uh, I didn't introduce Dr. Saeed and the Dr. Ali, but uh, I think uh, both are very uh, well-known and famous urologists in the field of endurology. And uh, Dr. Uh, Saeed is, uh, is a very close friend for me, so uh, I will be biased to, to him. He is uh, uh, one of the really uh, talented and one of the most uh, motivated Thank and enthusiastic much. and dedicated to his work. A lot of words I can say about Saeed. I really like his Thank motivation, you. his Thank enthusiasm, you. his everything. Uh, and he is a consultant of urology and endurology in King Abdelaziz National Guard Hospital in Riyadh. Uh, uh, and he is the head of endurology Saudi Urology Association. And he is the uh, coordinator and the chair of the uh, endurology section in the Arab School of Urology. Uh, and he, uh, I know he's very busy in many things and he's nominating uh, his uh, assistant to help in the Arab school, but uh, we insist to have his input uh, with us. And thank you for his uh, activity and his uh, participation. Uh, I will give the thank screen to Saeed to, to, to start his talk. Welcome, Saeed. Thank you very much. Uh, everybody is seeing the screen, isn't it? Yeah, yeah I'm seeing it. I'm seeing it. So, um, I will talk about our experience with the disposable, uh, flexible uh, urethroscope in real life. In, in, in real life, I'm not talking about the publication. I will just support it by some sort of uh, the experience of uh, other urologists. Uh, thank you, Professor Lee, again, for inviting me for this launching in, Beijing, in uh, Friendship Beijing Hospital. I will just declare that I work with these companies in the training, and the videos, images are our videos. So let's go for the reusable flexible utroscope. You will see here that most of the, uh, in the markets of reusable um, companies, their prices ranging between $20,000 to $25,000. When we talk about 10 procedure, Per, uh, per scope, you divide that amount of money. So each procedure will be about $2,000 if you think about 10, uh, about 10 cases. If you go to these conventional uh, uh, flexible urethroscope, you will see it doesn't matter of the prices. So it's between fifteen dollars to $19,000. The image is not quite good as the digital scopes. However, the prices are no, not, no, no big differences between them. So this will tell you how, how expensive these uh, scopes in the market. Even other companies from like Wolf gives you a scopes, Cobra Vision, or, or the other scope, Boa, which is digital. Uh, they are arranging $21,000. Uh, the size limiting between 8 to, to 9.9 .9 French for the Cobra. So why, why we are caring about reusable urethroscope? Because we need to increase durability to decrease the cost. If you have a scope that lasts for 30 procedure or 40 procedure, it's not like the scope lasting for 10 procedure. So we need to know where is the uh, breakdown in these reusable urethroscope? Why is damaged? Dr. Ali said the laser. Is it the laser? Is it the basket? Is it the procedure number? Is it the lower pool? Is it the sterilization method? Is it the access sheet? Because some people, they said, if you're using access sheet, you might increase the durability of your, your usable your score. Uh, in the pool a while ago, it, the, one of the um, uh, guys, he said, I use my flexible utroscope more than 30, percent, uh, 30 cases. It's a true. This is a study uh, for Olivier Traxel. This is a study that I have done with him when he did 60 procedure with the flexible skull. But we have to remember that Olivier is a good endurologist. He's an excellent urologist. He's an expert. So he knows how to, uh, uh, how to save his scope. So if Olivier goes for 60%, is it the line or not? I don't think so. Because most of the literature in the teaching hospital, 
these numbers goes down to five and 17 cases. So if, he, if, if the poll said that most of the people, they said, I damaged my scope, like Professor Lee, he said 20 cases. I agree with him because 17 is the average here. But in our center, so I was looking, where is the defect? Is it the surgeon? Is it the nurse? Is it the way of sterilization? Is it the instruments as accessories? So I decided to make audit for the scopes. As you see here that we audit the scopes by the numbers. And eventually after six months and one year, we discovered that you can see here that even the X2, 2116, this is a scope. So we had an audit for every scope comes to my hospital because we had 10. I want to know how many procedure really does for the, for example, this one is lasting for 24 cases, but in certain scopes last for 12 or 14. And I was shocked because I have seen some scopes in my hospital lasting for three cases. And this is a Flix X2, it's a $23,000, only three cases. So it means my, my, my operation cost $5,000. And this one is Flix X2. So I lo I'm losing money. So it's ranging between two cases to 24. So the, the awareness of this highly cost to the hospital gives you an idea of how much pressure they put the administration over our head that do not break that scope. Is it the resident? Is it? So I did the study again. What is the kind of sterilization? You can uh, increase the durability of your scope. So we proved that the Cydex is much better than the plasma steroid. And by this way, you can see that the, the Traxxer 2006, he did 50 procedures, 76 hours. In my hospital, we did 59 by the, by the, side, by the side. So we agree that the plasma is not the good option for reusable uteroscope. What else? We start to test the scopes pre and post operatively to still the people in sterilization. You might damage my scope for the plasma. So we put the pressure, we took the pressure from our department to the sterilization, take care of these scopes. Even if you could see here, this scope was damaged by the high pressure, high temperature down the plasma because of untrained people. And you can see the video in the left screen. You listen, this is a training resident who twisted our scope and we lost that scope. Laser, as Dr. Ali a while ago, is one of the big factors that we break our instrument due to the laser. So training, laser, we improved it. The sterilization, we choose the, uh, the plasma, uh, sorry, we choose the sidex, but we have to find another alternative because we cannot live with high cost uh, procedure. So what was the other alternative? Disposable flexible scope. Yes, it is our alternative. That was, that was the idea. We need something very co uh, cost effective. We do it, the resident playing around, increase the training, no fear. So we think that the, 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 the disposable scope should have the good image, should have good size, and should have the same manipulation as the flexible utroscope. If you could see, this is images of different scope, you can see the image here is comparable life view, OTU, or Pucin itself, using a stimulus ship, which is a very close to the digital one and better than the conventional. Even the handle, they did it as the design as the reusable uh, urethroscope. Why we need that image in the disposable scope? Because of this publication, if you, in urology is to see, if you see you achieve more, so you, uh, you do two centimeter stone in like Professor Lee or Dr. Ali, one centimeter, if you have a good vision, you will achieve more, you have a better outcome. The first disposable utroscope was in the market has a big failure because it was not accepted by the urologists. The handle was not made as the design as the reusable utroscope. The deflection was one side 250 and the shaft was eight French. It's a true, it's very cheap, it's $500, but you, you, you need to use the reusable fiber optic. The image is conventional. So it's, it is in the market, but it's not the big hit. The big hit was in 2016 by the Lighty View. You can see that the working channel is the same as the usable 3.6. You can see the shaft is 9.5, the tip is 7.7, .7, the deflection upside down 275. And you, with this disposable scope, you can have as 
you can go as as acute angle as this image you can see here we treated a 12 millimeter stone you go to that stone so it is it is a reusable but is made as disposable we were impressed by these scopes even you can see this is a tumor and uh, seen by the light view the image is quite good compared to the conventional so those disposable urethroscope uh, looks like a reusable urethroscope the Pusin uh, use scope came into the market as a semi-rigid with this very slight image this one where i tested myself this is my video in 2016 2015 i believe so and it was like a semi-rigid with a deflected uh, 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 tip uh, it was a nine French. Then they developed the second prototype, which was in, I believe it was uh, after that by, by six months or a year. Uh, uh, it is heavier, but it looks like a reusable. You can look, you can look the same shape of Pusin, they improve it, but they have this crescent-like, crescent -like, we call it uh, crescent light uh, um, uh, black in the, in the edges. However, You see this, uh, these images, which was, I was not happy at the beginning of experience about this. But however, those people from Pusin came and told me that we updated the software, we did something, and look at these videos during the last five years in my hospital, where we have the updated software. That's, uh, that's why I'm telling my colleague in Saudi Arabia or the Middle East, ask the guy Pusin to update your software, ask for a new duration of the, of the Pusin scope. You can see that those will never stop until they please you with the image. You can go with an impressive deflection. This is a Pusin goes in different deflection, acute, and you have second, um, you have a the primary and secondary deflection. Impressive deflection done by the Pusin uh, uh, in, these, uh, uh, um, in these cases. Uh, this is a Flex XC. Look at the impressive double deflection. So the Pusin did as the Flex XC exactly. We call it a secondary deflection. You can swim and go in every calyx you want. This is a posterior anterior, and uh, sorry, posterior lower calyx. A stone goes easily with the double deflection and pick up uh, uh, the stone. This is a two two centimeter lower polystone, I was afraid to break my scope. But with the disposable utroscope, I was free of fear. So I did two centimeter of stone without fearing, even if it's a broken. Uh, this is not costly as the reusable utroscope. Even I do popcorn, I explore my urethra, and it, it relieved me, relieved my residents to do the work with no, um, with no fear. With a Pusin, you can explore Randall plaques, you can do dusting, and you can pass kitting easily as the reusable uh, urethroscope. This is a two centimeter stone, Prusite stone, a very hard stone, one of the hardest. You have no fear, you break it with the laser, you turn it to like a dust, and you finish the job. Uh, if you have, if you don't want to break your reusable. We know that as long as the stone size increase, you might damage your uh, scope. Even if you do mini endo endoscopic combined interrenal surgeries, you can use that scope without fearing hitting by the, by the piece, by the nephroscope or by the like to class or by the laser from the other side. So it helps you to use it in two way uh, with no fear. Big companies just realized last year and said, okay, they are disposable in the market, we have to go. But like you are putting a knife in your chest, stores live for a long time on your usable urethroscope, but now they are convinced that they have to do a single use flexible utroscope, which is a big failure till now because the short angle of the scope, I, 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 I advise you to go and use this scope. It's not as perfect as the other scope. The only advantage that they give you the screen, if you have a flexible sister scope, if you have a flexible utroscope, you can use it at the same screen, but they are improving their, um, their, uh, uh, their products. Again, 
this is an, a publication which is I like like that those people who are doing 10 k five cases uh, per uh, per month they don't they are not uh, obliged to take a reusable bed because if you think about the cost it's only reusable the cost is about the storage about the sterilization about the transport about the patient on the table without a scope about uh, giving me my scope it's in the prepare so the cost is is not only the scope itself the scope is about the electricity it's about the car transport about everything in my hospital 2018 2019 we do about 300 cases the scope repair cost us $270,000. So we decided to bring the disposable uroscope in my hospital because this is too much money. So we decided to do the uh, 2040 cases equation. We call it 20% of our cases is difficult. So we do it for what? For the disposable uroscope. And 40% of our cases for the trainees. So I decided to put the disposable for difficult cases and for the trainees. Difficult cases, stone burden more than 50 millimeter, lower pole stone, congenital malformation, or you do bilateral uh, procedure. So this is the equation here. Reusable ultroscope never touched by resident or any urologist, only trained in the urologist. And we put disposable ultroscope for everyone, for resident, for trainees, for non in urologist, urologist, and we use disposable ultroscope for 20% these difficult cases. And we end up, you see this one, this is a very difficult case. We use the disposable ultroscope. You see the how acute angle. Imagine that the laser fiber is there, you might break it. So we use these disposable for difficult uh, uh, cases as you, uh, as you saw. This is the resident here, he is doing a solo procedure. I'm not afraid of breaking my, st my scope. So the, he did the procedure alone. He was solo. I was behind him. Now I can go to my office without a fear and he will gain more trust in himself uh, as a resident. So the predisposable area, 227 flexible ultroscope, 11 flexible ultroscope were repaired. So 10,000 per repair, it's a 116 total cost dollar as you see here by the disposable flexible ultroscope we achieved to reduce the cost from $116,000 to $21,000 only for repair so you can see that disposable ultroscope saved you a lot of money almost 80% of the cost of your uh, uh, of your uh, repair so the message here disposable ultroscope is very important for low volume center because it will save your time from uh, um, repairing and cycling, sterilization, nursing, and teaching hospital is very important because residents, they need to work. If you have a reusable ethoscope, you will never leave it for residents because it costs a lot. Patients with infection, HIV, difficult cases, lower polar stone, and large burden stone. Disposable ethoscope price will go down with the time. If it's now, some people are complaining it's $1,000 or $1,400, it will go with the time because of the nature of competition as same as the principle of other instruments. If you say, okay, your administration, this is a disposable ultroscope, I don't need it, I will throw it. It's the same principle as the single-use laser fiber. It will come to the market. It will stay there because people need time to be convinced. And the major advantage of this is the training without fear for you and for our administration. So again and again, as agreed by the beginning of the lecture and the debate of uh, Professor Farhad, that the intensive training is very important for disposable utroscope, for utroscopy. It's very important for those big companies to boost the training all around the world. People cannot, they, they did not born with the book inside their brain. They need to be trained. Professor Lee, he told me he travels every week. He trains people, he does operation. This is our mission here. And those um, uh, uh, training courses are very important. Image equality is very important. Those companies will never stop until they make you a very clean image. And again, again, if you have a low volume center, go with the disposable microscope because if you break the reusable microscope doing five cases per month, your administration will give you, a, will put you a pressure, then you will go back for, backward and you will never work again. But if you are relieved, uh, you will go further. 
High volume center is very important to introduce the disposable, but you have to think about difficult cases and training of your resident. Thank you very much. Thank you, Saeed. It's really very, very uh, interesting and to the target. Uh, uh, if you can uh, stop sharing the screen uh, so we can uh, uh, move forward. Uh, actually, uh, I uh, asked the, on the chat box for all our audience uh, if they have any questions to Dr. Saeed uh, so we can. Uh, ask him some questions if uh, but i didn't receive anything now so i have few questions aside uh, you had a, a, a very interesting study to compare the number of uh, cases uh, by uh, reusable scope and uh, the single use actually when we say how many cases for the reusable scope damage we are counting only cases, but not counting hours of work. Do you agree with me that sometimes when I, I say the damaged after uh, 20 cases, maybe 10 of them is only half an hour use? Uh, True. However, but in, in single use, you have, I, uh, as I have uh, from Posen, uh, which I am using, is around four hours. So almost uh, uh, all difficult cases you can use. So in your study, you, you count the hours of reusable one or just the number of cases? No, no, the hour, because duration is very important. As I told one of my colleagues, if you're using a reusable one in the 10th procedure, he will have, this scope will have a loss of deflection. You will never reach the lower pole. If I heard some of my colleagues, he said, I have my scope for 100th procedure. I can't believe it because I was with Olivier for years and I've known those, the reusable utroscope. Even if you repair it, it comes with the loss of deflection again and more vulnerable to, more vulnerable to damage. It doesn't mean that you repair it, it, it comes as a new one. So yeah. uh, I agree with you, it's the timing, it's the time, it's not the number of procedure. Yeah, another point that uh, you compared the, the reusable scope when you get a new one, case number one and case number 10 and number 20, how the quality, is it the same or it decreased with time? I did not, but a certain German hospital, a German publisher, uh, proved that the scope in the 10th procedure is not as good as the first procedure. It's like, it's like the car. Then it depends on the driver. It depends on the, of the, of the, of the doctor. Some doctors are twisting the scope. You need to be a soft uh, navigation. And so I don't think that the first uh, procedure as a new branded scope is like the 10th or 30th procedure, yeah. even if you repair it. Yeah. And uh, actually, I like the, the, the way that you present, and uh, I do that in, in my hostel, which we name it the hybrid technique, like cars, that we keep uh, the single use for difficult cases, for training, for younger residents, for True. whatever, and keeping the, the reusable for simple, straightforward cases. So uh, I like the terminology hybrid, and you have emphasized that very clear. Uh, Dr. Lee or Dr. Ali, do you have any questions to Dr. Saeed? Yeah, I don't. Uh, uh, thank you for, for your good presentation, but I want to say something. In our hospital, we are a small country, not too big like China, for example, or Saudi Arabia. So uh, we make all this uh, ex before. We ask if we want to buy both of them, like hybrid, like you said, uh, oh. Saeed, or we want to make only uh, single use. And and single use also, they are getting cheaper and cheaper every day. In, uh, in Switzerland, we got it about $700 now. You know? Dr. Lee, do you have any questions to Dr. Saeed? No? Yes, um, I think it's a very, very careful study. But uh, one question. So uh, I'm going to ask uh, uh, Saeed and Ali and also uh, Professor Yasser. So do you think uh, in future, reusable is necessary. No. I think uh, it won't be necessary if the market is very big and the uh, single one will be cheaper. So there is no need for that, for the reusable. So uh, how, how about... Okay, 
the, the imaging is getting better. Yeah. Now I, I use the Pusum uh, since uh, two and a half years, and the imaging is perfect. I, I think. Yeah. So I don't use a reusable in our hospital. We don't have it. Yeah. We didn't buy it. <laughs> Actually, let, let me share with you my expectation. I'm not sure this will happen in the future or not. I believe that uh, single use, I don't like the terminology of what say disposable. I, I prefer single use terminology. It's a small difference, but I prefer that one. Uh, it will come to our life in many aspects. And in the medical field, yes, we will get the single-use equipment and the accessories uh, very strong in the upcoming years. Uh, if you go back to the history, you remember that even the syringe, we were re-sterilizing the syringe. I'm talking yeah. about maybe 20, 25 years ago. We used the, a glass one and uh, we re-sterilize it again. And this is, became a historical. I believe that single-use equipments and accessories will come strongly and maybe if we are still alive after uh, 20 years more, we will talk about the reusable as a historical. Uh, this is for the new generation. I, <laughs> <laughs> 20 years ago, I was studying. This is studying. <laughs> very young, very young urologist. I, I, I agree with the professor. Uh, maybe this question is to me. I think, uh, I think big companies like Olympus, Wolf, and stores will suffer yeah. a lot. They will suffer a lot. They will lose the market like Nokia. If they don't go and uh, do their business right uh, with the rest, they will. I think reusable are not usable. I, mean, my, I work in three, four hospitals. In three hospitals, we don't use reusable and we did not buy it for the last uh, 18 yes. months. We stick That's to the I'm single one. No, yeah. Yeah, yeah, but I think I think the future will come. It's, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's reusable are not in the, in the head of the urologist anymore. I made, I made a questionnaire for my group in Saudi Arabia, urologist. How many of you are believing in reusable? Are your question, uh, uh, Professor Lee? Only 10% are still believing in reusable eutroscope. Because of uh, one thing, because of one thing, the administration, if you tell them, buy me $20,000, they easier to give them, give me $800. Yeah, and so the urologist will come and cross the line and do his business. It, it, it relieve him. Yes, uh, I, 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 actually, I, I, yeah. you're under pressure. <laughs> With yeah. your yeah. <laughs> we are uh, relatively uh, uh, late of time, but uh, I, we have to move forward to our next uh, uh, speaker, our uh, very eminent uh, urologist, uh, Dr. Ali Rifai, uh, he is a very eminent and well-known endo-urologist. He is a senior consultant urologist, and he is the medical director uh, of uh, Insideline Hospital. I hope that I pronounce it correctly in Switzerland. He has a long experience in endo-urology and the flexible urethroscopy and it will be a great honor for all of us today to listen to his experience about using a flexible urethroscopy and sharing his experience in, in flexible urethroscopy. Welcome to Dr. Ali, and you can share your screen and you can start your presentation. Welcome. So, good day. I'm, uh, can you open it or? I think you need to share your screen. You have it, your presentation. You have a green button, uh, Dr. Ali, there, share screen. This one? In, in the lower, uh, at the bottom of the Zoom, you will find in the middle a green button, which called share screen, just to click on it. When you see the camera and the mic and the same line in the middle, you will find share screen. Close to the chat box. Do you have the chat box? Yeah. Close, just 
beside share screen leave when you leave there is a record question and a and a leave you did share screen it's not working uh, I think uh, LB or someone from uh, IT from Bozing can help Dr. Ali. You you found the button, Dr. Ali, or no? I have a green button, and if I use it, I don't have the. I cannot share it with you. Just click on it. You click. Yes, click on it. So you, they will give you options either to share the desktop or the PowerPoint presentation. You have to select one of them, and there is a bottom down name share. So it will. So share. You can, yes. You can. You can vacuum. <laughs> okay, I think. Uh, uh, I can help in something that I can, uh, I will find your presentation and I can share it on my screen and then you can uh, go ahead. Okay. But this may take a few seconds. No, I don't have it. Dr. Ali, have you ever opened your presentation before share? Okay. I got your presentation. I will try to share it. Okay, so you can see the, your presentation now, Dr. Ali? Yeah. So I will this try to move the slides for you. Okay. So you can start. Okay, uh, today I want to share with you my experiences in Switzerland. Uh, uh, so uh, you, you can uh, make the follow, yes? Or I have to make it um, myself. Uh, do you have it also in, in Chinese? Uh, no, I don't have it in Chinese. I have it like uh, a PDF. Okay. Okay, so I just move it. This is this is our hospital. It is in uh, it is located in, in the middle of Switzerland, and uh, this is one of the oldest hospital in Switzerland, built uh, uh, one thousand two hundred ninety one. And that uh, they have renewed it uh, in, in uh, 2018. Uh, I want to tell you something about the, this is a s small area, a very beautiful region in Switzerland and the Alps. And uh, we started the urology here to build the department since three years. 
we are making now about uh, 50 to, to 90 cases a, a year. It is increasing because in this area, there is also a lot of uh, stone patients. With, uh, also, uh, different uh, uh, volume and, and uh, <laughs> I'm not sure. I <laughs> this is the area, you can see it. With the leg, and this is our our hospital. Yes, in the in the history of the, the urology, we know that the urology there were uh, uh, stone cutters in the, and and now I I show you one stone by a mummy in in Egypt. This is one picture of that, find in a in a mummy. This is only a, a little bit history about about stone and stone treatment. The, the build uh, on the right side, it, it's uh, about 400 years old. How they cut it, the stone cutters in Europe. And even- if you, need, if you need me to move the slides, just let me know, please. Okay, just, just move it, okay. So this is one of uh, famous people, uh, they, are, uh, they, have, they have stones, Napoleon, for example, in 1800. Uh, Eight. And uh, what I have uh, talked about their uh, their bearing about about the stones uh, and the paint also. <laughs> I was uh, here. I, I uh, make some uh, for for Napoleon, Martin Luther, and also Johannes uh, Wolfgang von Goethe, German and and uh, famous Napoleon. And you can read what I have. Uh, uh, talk about the, the pain they have inside when they get the stone. So you can move forward. Yeah. In our in our uh, hospital before uh, we we was discussing about the cost because the cost is very local. It depends from uh, country to country. Here in Switzerland, uh, because we were uh, developing this uh, urology department. Uh, we choose to, to work only for uh, for uh, single uh, uh, use urethrorhinoscope. And it was uh, because of the costs and also uh, we didn't know before how many cases we will get per year. So that's why we said we have to be flexible, we have to, to, to get uh, uh, a good... Uh, <coughs> so, so that's why we use before only the single use, and we didn't buy the re reusable because in Switzerland it's more than one hundred twenty thousand dollars, all in all the costs of that. So that's why we got checked for bioscientific and also Pusen, and we choose Pusen because it is less cost and the same uh, imaging, uh, good good uh, imaging. And uh, uh, I was uh, using both of them, and uh, I choose Pusen before, and I am working on it since uh, three years. And I'm very, very uh, happy with that. I don't have any problems. And uh, we are making now about 300 a year cases. But it is increasing. Uh, the spe specification, Dr. Said, you talked about that. This is the, the, the deflection also, the angulation and so we don't have, it is a very, very good, uh, uh, flexible urethroscope and the handle also on it, the new one with the imaging, it is perfect for me. I don't have any problems with that. This is some publication from 2019 uh, two, uh, in October uh, versus as a single use versus uh, the reusable the digital flexible urethroscopy and the conclusion is that that one is also have a good visibility, a good malignity. We don't have any infection. We don't have any, I mean, cross infections. Complications are the same if you are not uh, very uh, uh, comfort in that. And uh, for us, for the cost and for everything, it's uh, going very good because we are making uh, inpatient uh, uh, renoscopy and flexible for one or two days and are good paid in Switzerland. So the, the cost for the single use are 
in our uh, country uh, very good. So, and and it is going cheaper. So the first time we we, we buy it, it was about one thousand one hundred uh, Swiss franc. Now it is about seven hundred. It's getting less. So, this is are some some uh, pictures from from Pusen. Uh, you know, Pusen, we can we can work uh, on it about four hours. It means you can get it also for difficult difficult stones for a longer time and uh, uh, they, they have never been damaged. Also, in, in uh, when I when I use it for three hours for for difficult and complicated uh, stones. Last time I took about thirteen small stones from a kidney. Uh, including the, the sheet and uh, the cousin was, was working, also the imaging after three hours, like, like the first minute. I mean, it was very, very good imaging and uh, also the deflection and so on, it was working the whole time with no problems. Okay. And so you, you see, we have no repair, no cause, no, uh, no infection and, and also we don't have plasma in our hospital, so we don't have uh, also cost for uh, re-sterilization. And sometimes I make one day for the for the uh, urethrorhinoscopy. So I use, uh, for example, if I make four uh, operations in one day, I'm very flexible to use it. Uh, I don't uh, <coughs> lost time uh, during both operation or three operation. It's always uh, continuous. Okay. Have you seen it here? Yeah, this is also a publication to outbreak the adamant resistant for Escherichia coli or Enterobacter in urinary infection. Also, there is no risk for prior contamination with a single use urethral this is me in our uh, operation rooms. And this is the Sphinx laser I'm, I'm using. This is also a new one and it's very effective. Uh, that's why I meant uh, before with the, with the dusting, if the stone is a little bit big or it's, uh, so I can, I can make a good dusting with that and it's a very effective one. Uh, it calls Sphinx GR. So this is me during the operation and some pictures from, from the war, not to uh, repeat all what the colleagues I uh, make in his presentation. And as you see, the, we, have, we insert after that also a double G, like I told them, for 99% uh, of the cases. This is during the operation. The stone was about 1.2 uh, centimeters. This is after cracking the stone, taken outside. So the evolution of the video technology also, uh, it, it's, it is uh, increasing and the imaging uh, quality is increasing and the costs are getting less. So, I mean, the future is for uh, uh, single-use uh, urethronoscopy. This is my own opinion and, and experiences here. Because uh, even even the those who didn't want to, to make it before, like Stores or Olympus or Golf now, uh, they I think they regret I didn't begin with like uh, Boston Scientific and Cousin and now they are going in the market also to, to uh, uh, sell some uh, some of them and now uh, they will <coughs> get less experience than, than Pusen or, or Boston Scientific and uh, the market will be now I think in, in five years will be changed completely for uh, this kind of uh, uh, single uh, use. They will get better, better imaging, better uh, uh, maybe use and they will get less costs. That's why the future are for that. And in the Switzerland, we have that one to have to take care always in the Alps, not to get stones 
from the sky. <laughs> it's very dangerous. So this is some comics about stone treatment. Uh, thank you, Dr. Ali, uh, for sharing your uh, experience in Switzerland. Uh, it's really, uh, uh, me the message is very clear that uh, uh, cost-wise and uh, efficacy-wise, uh, this is why uh, I understood that you are now using the uh, single use in almost all yeah. uh, all of your cases. Yeah. Uh, so from the okay. beginning, we didn't buy the other one. Okay. We made with the with the administration before we we started uh, okay. the whole uh, discussions before, and then we decide only to use the single one, and okay. that's why we didn't buy the other one. And we are using it since three years, and now about 100, 120 cases to 300 cases. It's, it's increasing, and uh, we are using only that. Uh, thank you, Dr. Ali. Thank you, Dr. Saeed. I really uh, I enjoyed today uh, being with all of you. And thank you, Professor Lee, for your initiative and uh, inviting uh, uh, me, Dr. Saeed, and Dr. Ali. Uh, it's really a, a great experience that we share the knowledge, we share the practice yeah. between two different communities, two different regions in the world. And thank you for Bozin for supporting that, not for only launching the scope, but for the main concept that sharing experience. And I wish to continue uh, such activity and not only in, in, in a virtual life, because what we have nowadays, I hope that after this crisis that we can meet physically to share the experience in reality. Uh, uh, wish you all the best, Dr. Lee, and thank you uh, again and again for uh, hosting uh, us uh, in your launch. And thank you for demonstrating a very easy procedure that uh, uh, one of my residents was watching and he said, I will go tomorrow to do five cases. It's very easy. <laughs> <laughs> so you represented it uh, in, in a very simple, easy way that encouraged everyone to go. Uh, but I think the message is very clear today that single use, yes, it helped all of us in, in, in training and the underlying causes, cost, uh, fragility, maintenance, processing. So it ends up with good trained young urologists building new future careers that they can utilize with confidence, uh, the flexible scope, and it will keep an open question. We, I think no one can answer it now that the armamentarium of stone management may be changing in the near future in, in different words that may flexible retroscopy replace other in techniques in treatment of the stone, or we can say indication will expand in the favor of flexible retroscopy. I think maybe some of us have some expectation but uh, we will wait till we see if the guidelines or some evidence base will come to us with a different information. Uh, so uh, I'd like to close, but Dr. Lee, if you have any words before closing, it's the mic for you. Yeah, uh, thank you, Professor Yasser. And also thank you uh, for the host and the uh, I think you you are the best host <laughs> I ever seen, and thank uh, also thank uh, Saeed and uh, thanks Professor Ali. Uh, thank you for share the experience and uh, your opinion about the FUS technique. But uh, in my mind, I think in future the only thing for FUS we can use is a single use instrument. Maybe the reusable instrument will be history. Yeah, as you say. 
So uh, light uh, C and then light uh, C is hash T. So, and thank you again. It's my pleasure. Dr. Saeed, final words? Thank you very much. Thank you. It was a pleasure as always with you, Professor Farahat, with my friend Dr. Ali from Switzerland. And thanks again, my friend, Professor Lee. Hope you're going to fly soon and work everywhere as usual. <laughs> yeah. Thank okay. you. Thank you very much. Most welcome. Dr. Ali, final words, please. I want to thank you all uh, for all uh, these uh, good discussions and very effective discussions. And I want to say that uh, if the procedures are looking very easy, it means the operator is uh, an excellent one. <laughs> okay, good. So thank you, everyone. Thank you, Pozin. I uh, wish to see you again. And uh, bye. Good afternoon and good evening. <laughs> thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye-bye.